Hi, it's me again, and I know I'm a little late to the party on this one, but I thought it was time that we looked at that hundred grand's worth of equipment that was stolen from the BBC over the last three years. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? Let's take a look. The BBC has admitted more than £100,000 worth of electronic devices were stolen in the last three years in a humiliating blow for the corporation. Dozens of laptops, phones and camera equipment have been stolen from the BBC since January 2018, with the total totalling more than £100,000. The findings obtained via a Freedom of Information request have led to the corporation to be accused of failing to protect the financial interests of TV licence fee payers. Now, I have never pretended that the BBC respects your money if you're a licence fee payer. They have zero respect for your money. Never have had, never will have. You can tell that by the crazy salaries they give Lineker. You know, and the crazy salaries they pay a lot of their other talent. Lineker's just a poster boy for it. But he is a ridiculous salary that he gets. And that proves that they have no respect for your money. The other proof that they have no respect for your money is the fact that BBC Studios is a separate entity to the BBC and nothing to do with the licence fee and they sell the shows that you paid for with your licence fee all around the world for profit. For profit. They also give those shows over to the UK TV network. That's why Dave was flooded with only Fools and Hall season, Red Dwarf and Top Gear. Those shows were long since paid for by your television licence fees and yet they're being shown on a commercial channel making money through commercials. They don't care about your money. They have no respect for you or your money. And this story just adds fuel to that fire, doesn't it? Peter Jones, lead author of the TV licensing blog, which is a very good blog, by the way, highly recommended blog, made the Freedom of Information request, which found 58 phones, 52 laptops, 20 pieces of camera equipment, and one computer had been stolen from the BBC between January 2018 and May 2021. In total, 132 items were stolen within the three-year period, with a value of all totalling over £101,000. And this £101,000 amounts to more than 640 annual TV licences. That sounds like a lot, but when you think how many millions of TV licences they get, they don't care. They don't care. It's, it's a drop. It's a drop in the ocean for the BBC, a hundred grand. It's nothing. They spend that on lunches. So Mr Jones from TV Licensing Blog told The Express, at a time when the BBC is cutting services and inflicting the £159 TV licence fee on hard-pressed over 75s, it is really alarming that failings of the corporation's security procedures have allowed the theft of more than £100,000 worth of digital devices. This is further evidence, as if any were needed, of the BBC's systematic inability to protect the financial interests of the TV licence fee payer. There really never has been a better time for people to cancel their BBC TV licences and adopt one of the many legal alternative methods of viewing. Yeah, I talk about that a lot on here. If you're still a TV licence payer, you need to stop doing that. You're not going to miss anything. You're going to be able to watch 90% of the stuff you'd watch anyway. In the pinned comments below, you're going to find links to what you can watch without a TV licence and a few other videos that will help you. And I tell you, I'm also going to put a link in to this guy's blog. It's a good website this one I visit it regularly and it is good so I'm going to put the link below pop over click there and there's loads of information on there that will help you as well if you're fed up watching my face you can go and read his information. Mr Jones said the TV licensing blog also asked the BBC to provide information about the number and value of electronic devices lost over the last three years but astonishingly the corporation was unable to do so because it does not maintain a central record of those items. How do they not maintain a central record for those items? I work for a really big company, and everything I have for that company, so a phone, a laptop, printers, whatever they give me, has a sticker on it with an asset number, and all the assets are held in a database. And if they're not returned at the end of use to be removed from the database, they know where it's gone away. So the BBC know, they just don't want to say. A company that size will know. They will have people that deal with the assets. Don't. They're just trying to cover up because a lot's been lost and a lot of money's been wasted and they just don't want that in the papers, do they? Those items probably run to many thousands of pounds, but there is no way of knowing due to the BBC's poor record keeping. If they actually don't have records of that, then that's an absolute embarrassment because I've worked for really ropey companies that keep full details of every asset they own. In 2020, when most BBC employees spent their time working from home, 
16 phones, 6 laptops and 4 pieces of camera equipment were reported stolen. This amounted to £13,100 of lost items. Were they actually stolen or did they actually end up on something like eBay or Gumtree or something for a couple of quid? A BBC spokesperson said, The BBC takes any incidents of theft very seriously. We consistently review our security policies to ensure they are as robust as possible. Well, then tell us the story of how in 2020, when most BBC employees spent their time working from home, 16 phones, 6 laptops and 4 pieces of camera equipment was reported stolen. So that stuff was with your BBC employees, okay, which were working from home because they had to be at home. So the equipment was at home. So unless everybody got broken into, which is very unlikely during that time, how was it reported on? Was it stolen by the employees? If so, there should be internal procedures and we should be able to hear the stories of that because you're a publicly funded company. How was it stolen if they're working from home? I've been working from home and I have a laptop and a phone and a couple of other bits and they're on my desk because that's where I work and that's where they stay. I don't go out to work because I'm working from home. It's not getting stolen. The only person that could have stolen it was the employee who sold it on eBay or Gumtree or something and then said, oh no, I've lost it and I've left it in a Starbucks that wasn't open. You know, it just goes right to the very core of the BBC not being honest, the dishonesty and the thinking you can get away with anything and it goes right down to the bottom level of like the low level people who are working from home who need a laptop and a phone selling it I'm guessing obviously that's alleged by me and um, claiming it was stolen how was it stolen we need to know the details publish the details of how the stuff was stolen so what do you think about this story I'm a bit late to the party and you've all read it a couple of weeks ago and probably commented on it but leave your comments below and we'll have a bit of a chat about it because I just think it's just another example of what actually goes on inside the BBC and the minds of the people who are inside the BBC. They just don't care. And the quicker we can get rid of their funding method and let them fend for themselves, if all this stuff gets stolen by the employees and flogged or whatever, and we didn't pay for it, I couldn't care less. I don't care if ITV's laptops get stolen. They had to pay for them through working hard to make good stuff to get advertisers to be able to pay for them. And probably because of that, they take better care of their stuff, maybe. I don't know. If I had to buy my own laptop for work, I'd take a lot better care of it than I do my work laptop. Not that I'm horrible to my work laptop. If anyone from work's watching, I'm really, I love it. It's really good. It's good. But anyway, leave your comments below while you're down there. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. So we've grown this channel massively over the last year. This time last year, it was on just under 6,000 subscribers, I think. And now we've just crossed 40,000. It's all thanks to you sharing the videos and getting all these stories much more exposure than I was able to give them last year. So thank you so much for that. And I'll see you in another video again soon. Thanks for watching.